nearly everyone engages in self-talk, even if it's not loud enough for others to hear. Almost every individual possesses an internal dialogue. Despite some finding it odd or uncomfortable, this ability is a superpower that unlocks the door between undesirable and preferred realities. However, the challenge lies in halting the cycle of negative inner chatter and substituting it with empowering language, a skill most lack. Understanding that words aren't merely labels, but vehicles fueled by our thoughts and emotions capable of ferrying us into the realities we desire is crucial. You might not realize how much your inner thoughts impact your life. Put simply, the conversations you have in your mind shape the situations you end up in. As the saying goes, as you think in your heart, so are you. This means your thoughts follow the paths created by the ongoing talks in your mind. To change your life for the better, you need to let go of old conversations and replace them with new ones. This process, described in the Bible as abandoning the old self, is about giving your mind a fresh start. Scriptures put it this way, do not conform to the thinking patterns of the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Embarking on the journey of renewing your mind is akin to resetting your thoughts. Your words are a reflection of the ongoing processes in your mind. For, as the saying goes, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. This transformative process is what scriptures term as repentance or metanoia. And it's not about feeling remorse for past sins. Instead, it involves a shift in consciousness and awareness toward a higher frequency aligned with the mind of Christ. In alignment with scripture, the call is to let the mind of Christ be in you. This mind, as exemplified by Christ Jesus, signifies a state where, despite being in the image of God, there is no assertion of equality with God. Therefore, to change your thoughts, there's a necessity to alter how you talk. The conversations within your mind must undergo a shift. The world around you provides numerous opportunities to transform your thoughts, and everything unfolding in your life is intricately connected to the internal dialogues you may not even be aware of having in your mind. Filtering your thoughts through a divine lens is prudent, as suggested in scripture. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Thoughts contradicting the positive aspects of your life are considered as arguments in a battle for your focus. What you feed with attention grows in your mental garden. Focus is the water that causes seeds of doubt, anxiety, and self-loathing to sprout. On the contrary, focusing on positive things raises your vibration, leading to desired encounters. As Paul advises, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, think on these things. Our mental conversations shape the course of our lives. They play a significant role in shaping our experiences. Without changing our internal dialogue, our personal history remains stagnant. Attempting to change the external world without addressing our internal conversations is like battling against the natural order of things. Negative internal conversations are often the cause of disappointments and misfortunes. Our external experiences reflect our inner dialogues. What we focus on internally manifests in our reality. Our present mental conversations, if negative, confront us in the future as wasted or inverted words. Take, for example, anxious thoughts about the future. Many people feel like things only get tougher, even when they dream of financial freedom, owning a home, and not struggling to make ends meet. The reality presented often contradicts these aspirations. In these moments, the world offers an opportunity to speak positively about the reality you want to experience. Do you genuinely believe that you can rise above and break free from the system? Or do you find yourself thinking, who am I kidding? Only people like so-and-so can achieve that. Maybe the best I can do is just this little. What do you tell yourself in such moments? Albert Einstein once wisely said, you cannot solve problems with the same level of consciousness you used when you got into the problem. To gain control over our lives, we need to become aware of the negative conversations in our minds and act purposefully. The key is awareness, not automated operations, where you act without considering what you say, why you say it, and its impact on your life. 
Being created in God's image and likeness, we must understand how this operates in our lives. The scriptures teach that God's words don't come back to him void. They must fulfill the purpose for which he sent or spoke them. Likewise, you must learn to use your words intentionally. This is precisely why scripture tells us that every person will give an account for idle words they spoke. In another instance, we are told that whatever a person sows, they will reap the same. Simply put, the words you plant will eventually sprout and become flesh. The events and relationships in life reflect our internal world. Speaking internally from a place of fulfilled desires is the key to conscious creation. Our internal dialogues continually manifest around us. To see and hear the desired reality externally, we must first envision and hear it within, mastering the art of controlled internal speech. Our internal dialogues wield immense power, akin to the guiding force of divine utterances. In the genesis of existence, there existed the Word, intertwined with the divine, shaping realities with its resonance. Our inner conversations, echoing the essence of this divine discourse, act as sculptors moulding the life we manifest within and around us. The woman with the issue of blood, as recounted in the Bible, suffered from a chronic condition for 12 years. Convinced that touching the garment of Jesus could bring about healing, she engaged in a powerful internal dialogue before taking action. A meditation on the possibility of healing through touching Jesus' garment helped her frame a new reality for herself. Driven by faith and a strong internal conviction, she expected specific results from this encounter. This internal dialogue was crucial in shaping her expectations and paving the way for the healing she sought. When she finally touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she experienced the intended results. She was healed. Jesus, acknowledging the power of her faith, confirmed to everyone present that it was her unwavering belief that made her well. This biblical account underscores the transformative impact of our internal conversations in shaping our realities. Emphasizing the importance of faith and positive expectation in manifesting desired outcomes. The synergy of mind and speech gifts us a transformative journey toward realms beyond the physical. As the ancient teachings convey, the word, akin to the offspring of the mind, carries the vibrational essence that resonates outward, drawing back into our lives reflections of our internal frequencies. Our internal conversations, akin to the sacred utterances, script the narrative of our existence. Transforming the mind necessitates an alchemical change in our internal dialogue, aligning the whispers of our aspirations with the orchestrations of our envisioned reality. Much like how orange seeds yield oranges and apple seeds yield apples, success requires planting the right seeds to cultivate a rich harvest of achievement. To attain success, we must sow the seeds of success in our minds, adopting the mindset as if we already possess it. When you allow doubt to grow and you water it, you are allowing weeds that will choke the life out from your good plants. Scripture admonishes us in the book of Joshua to meditate day and night on the word that carries life. Only through this practice can we achieve good success. This form of meditation involves the repetitive utterance of what is true. It's important to note the distinction between facts and truth. Facts are what your natural senses tell you, while truth exists in the internal knowledge deep within your spirit. It signifies the understanding that whatever you're experiencing doesn't have to be so. Being aware of discomfort in disease, stress or financial struggle means a part of you is conscious of a state in which none of these things exist in your reality. This aspect, merged with the divine, deserves your focus. Reflecting on the language of Jesus in the scriptures, he avoided using words like death, instead referring to it as sleep. This choice of speech and labeling creates new beliefs in you, making it impossible for you to fail in manifesting desired outcomes aligned with the will of the Father. To achieve powerful desired results in finances, relationships or even health, envision intensely, infusing your imaginary state with the tones and sensations of reality. This active use of imagination awakens the spirit of achievement and relief within us. Picture yourself elsewhere, as if it were here, bridging the gap between then and now. 
embodying the version of yourself you wish to become. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. See the end before you get there and visualize it as done. Pay attention to your internal conversations during this imaginative exercise. If they align with your envisioned reality, you've successfully bridged the gap. If you encounter resistance, view it as an invitation to delve deeper into your thoughts and emotions, as it may point to limiting beliefs or doubts that need acknowledgement and resolution. Try this exercise and you'll witness its transformative power. If you're a fellow truth seeker, don't forget, truth has a name and that name is Jesus. God bless you until we meet again on the next one. Shalom.